Hello! Ah, what am I doing today? I have bought myself a pool trowel. Why well, have you bought a pool trowel? How are you going to plaster a swimming pool? I hear you ask. No. <laughs> Kurt Giordano is always using one. And uh, I thought, you know what? I'm going to get myself one. And I bought this one and I dropped him a little note to say, Hey, Kirk, I bought myself a pool trowel. And he replied, Oh, it wants to be at least four and a half inches by, uh, and only semi curved, so kind of like curved, a bit kind of straight, and then curved again. And I thought, nope, <laughs> I've got the wrong one then. This is four inches across, and it's a complete curve on the top and the bottom, on the heel of the toe. Um, but then thinking about it, I think some of the gear they use over in the States, even though they're mud and stuff, I think it's a lot lighter. As you know, I. I I've heard myself trying to use my 18 inch uh, ordinary ox that's five inches, so I didn't really want four and a half, five inch one anyway. So anyway, the reason I'm gonna try this out today, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm meshing this wall, but I'm just skimming it. And the first coat, I wanna see if a pull trout leaves trout marks. I mean, it's gonna leave something, but I just wanna see what it, how it comes out, what it looks like when I'm laying that first coat on. And that's what we're gonna do right now. Hey! Right, uh, the other thing I didn't mention is it's a double shank on there as well, which makes it a little bit more awkward because you can't do that old swivel it <laughs> around <laughs> very well <laughs> in your hand when it's got a twin shank on it as a rough punch for just the one. Uh, anywho, let's get some of this gear on and see how it spreads. Feels quite nice. I have spent a good part of this morning putting the um, rubbing this trowel because it's brand new on some uh, fairly coarse sandpaper for about an hour. I had a bit of time to spare, so I'm waiting for something else. And um, yes, it's got a bit of an edge on it now, thankfully, but uh, whether it be any good for troweling up after. I've absolutely no idea. Absolutely no idea, but we shall see. We shall see. Hopefully I'll get my mesh on a lot better than I did. <laughs> that last time we used it. In the last video. I'll cut it back to the front, but there's no there's no real pattern on here, it's just a blank bit of wall, so um to worry about. To worry about. So I've mixed this gear just a teeny weeny bit thinner than I normally like to um, work with it. But uh, it's all right, but uh, sometimes it can, uh, it's a bit easier if it's a little bit thicker. And it's not that much wall to cover either. But I have put some half time in it, so that should uh, see me right, it says. It's going well. The amount of times this labourer gets lumped in the plaster, I don't know where they're from, I'm definitely going to sack him, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah, four inch trout's quite nice. Anyway, right on the 18. 18 inch for laying on anyway for laying on finish <laughs> Should you press the record button now that's the done if not you literally are talking to yourself for no good reason <laughs> If you are, if you're filming, uh, filming yourself for a YouTube or just to put on your website for your customers, which is always a brilliant idea, don't forget. Um, make sure you've got your little steps or hop up with you because I've got it here somewhere, I think. But they're, they're not handy and I need, and I need them. <laughs> Never mind. I'll find them in a minute. <laughs> <clears throat> 
I've got my little red dots on the wall again with my radiator brackets. They're gonna go back on. Uh, not run out of those yet, so I haven't tried the butter um, option. Over revealing the holes. If you haven't seen that one, it's a, it's the sort of um, rather than leave screws in a hole. If you uh, if you put butter in them, apparently, and then plaster over that, that the oil in the butter um, comes through the plaster, and you can see where the hole is. But uh, as I said, I can't recommend doing that until I actually try it, and I won't try it while I've still got uh, still all the stuff I need. Now, it's, you can't see this because it's not on camera. Um, but uh, yeah, trying to, trying to put stuff in the corner <laughs> with a pull trowel, we'll forget that. <laughs> but I can worry about that once the bulk's on. Once the bulk's on. Mm -hmm. Have a nice lump. That's the place to get quality trowel, tram lines in your gear, <laughs> on your wall. <laughs> Nice little lumps in the plaster. I think it might be because this was an open bag. It's not been open that long from the last job, I think, but uh, you can so easily get lumps in. Or you've got to be really careful sometimes that um, there's no little lumps stuck to your uh, stuck to your uh, your whisk. Because that's easy done. I mean, unless you're spotless with your whisk. Make sure it's absolutely properly cleaned off before the stuff sets on every job you're on. When you're on a small job, that's easy to do. If you're on some massive job where you're going like the clappers, because the plasters might be getting ahead of you, ahead of you because you've overdone it, um, you ain't really got time to stop and start making absolutely sure, or I haven't, that uh, you haven't got any um, plaster still stuck to it that you're going to have to bang off with a hammer later. It's just like it ain't the best option, but it's the one I think most used by most guys. <laughs> at the end of the day. But even if you run your whisk in a in a bucket of water, you still get that uh, you still get residue on it that builds up. Which eventually I like to uh, remove by giving it a good old clump. I just think that can't be very good for your motor either but um on the old Rafina Mega Mixer, they are solid as a rock, as I think most spreads will tell you. And I've said before, that's why the higher shops have used them for donkey jeers, because they just, they can take a beating and last for blooming donkey jeers. So they're, they're about pushing 400 quid or around that mark, worth every penny. Well, especially when you think a battery DeWalt will set you back six or seven hundred pounds, whatever it is. But uh, again, like I said before, unless you're working on a site, uh, you know, if you're on a domestic, then you might as well have a cable mixer. What's the point of the uh, dot? Thank you, thing. Well, I'm going to pop the top of this wall on, but I'm going to uh, save me battery power in the camera. Um, and when I go to put this mesh on, just so I've got it on film as well, I'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll put it back on. Which will be in a split second, yay! Right, I'm back in the room. What I need is my little steps. Uh, oh, and my knife, because my best isn't going to fit exactly, is it? Oh, rookie mistake. Where's my knife? Got it. I got it. I got it. All right, cleaned off my pole trowel. I think I won't say this clean for long. You probably already know that. <laughs> if you know me, you already know that. Alright. <laughs> There's some mesh I cut earlier. Um, I was going to do the full drop down, but I've got, um, I've got a rad going on there. You can go across, but I've come across a doing that before. It's easy to just drop down and then cut the length off. You don't want it as long as you originally, really originally planned to have this stuff. Yeah. Also, getting up here with um, a trowel in your hand is quite sensible <laughs> as well. <laughs> okay, let me trowel. Mm. 
Beautiful. For those of you that haven't seen it, it's not on me channel yet, but I did, um, I had my first go at uh, Venetian plastering. And uh, obviously I learned quite a lot from watching other people's videos. Uh, and Blaine's mostly when I started. So I didn't make any, well, any of the mistakes. So I didn't make as many, as many mistakes as I could have done if I hadn't watched any. Um, and it came out, came out a treat. I mean, it's not perfect, but well, I just didn't expect it to look uh, as good as it as good as it did. But I did do it on a real piece of wall. I didn't do it on a ball or anything. But obviously, when you've got a, a nice strong wall, when you're burnishing it to get that shine on it, it's a lot easier. You can put lots of pressure on it if you need to. Uh, we'll see if there's a bit of plaster ball or um, some a bit of MDF that's just lying a bit loose. And. Uh, and that's not so good. Now I want to trim this off because I'm not going to go behind the rad with it. Um, I've put spots on, this is one of the reasons actually. I put the spots on for, um, I'll find it now for a minute, let it again. To show where the screws are when the plaster dries, but I've never put a mesh and another coat of plaster over the top of those uh, type of um, dots before. So. Now, I've either spilt some red paint on myself from somewhere, or cut me poor little mitt on something. Perhaps it's the sharpness of all that uh, sanding I did with this trowel this morning. Get older. When you've been breathing in plaster dust for nearly 40 years, I'm pretty sure that <laughs> it has a detrimental effect on your brain cells, let alone your lungs. And let's face it, who likes wearing a mask? The amount of time you should wear a mask really, but especially when you're mixing up, because this amount of dust over the years, it's not technically toxic, but it's not going to do you any good, is it? And uh, but even for me, like, I find that I'm wearing a mask for a while and then, oh, in the summer, it's just, it's just too hot. Try have a mask stuck on your face, you know? But, but very, very sensitive. Mm -hmm. Well, so far, I'm liking my pool trail. Apart from obviously not being able to get into the corners with it. <coughs> Pardon moi. Mm -hmm. Bit curly, a bit curly there. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> now some guys will literally take this from edge to edge on the top, the bottom, and where it makes another piece. Um, I'm not that anal with it, if I'm honest. Some guys might go, oh, well, you'll probably get a crack where the, in that one little spot where the mesh isn't meeting or overlapping or whatever. But uh, I never used to use this stuff at all. So um, I'm not going to get any more hairline cracks than the next plasterer. So. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. What I'm not going to bother is... Um, what's that like? Should I take the, should I take the speed skim over the top of this just to give it that, uh, you know? I've got enough to do that. Now, I've got half time in this, so I need to be a bit uh, careful that it's not going off in my old bucket while I'm uh, messing about with this. Mm-hmm. Alright, let's grab the. Let's grab a screen skew. Uh, big one? Yeah. 1200, wet the blade out like a professional wood. Thank you very much. There, coming back. Coming back. There we go, there we go. There he is, there he is. And then, get your steps out of the way for a minute. That's going to happen. That's going to happen. Not, not sensible. Not sensible. These new fan bangled spray skims, they don't, uh, they don't do anymore, are they? I've been using one for about three years now, has it been? Three years, something like that. But uh, I won't go back to not having one. I know you can do it the traditional way, but I did it traditional way for absolutely donkey years. So, now I'll do. Let's second coat this up. I might have to knock down my uh, gear a bit. Add a bit of water, loosen it up a tad. That's it like. Oh yeah, that's too thick. Yeah. Probably nothing for that. We're going to put in speedy up stuff in this. It's not going to. Uh, it's not going to hang about, is it? No. Yeah. We're going to put a bit too much water in to knock it back up again. Don't forget, if you're ever doing this, that it's um, it's going to go off a lot quicker, even still. Unless you've got extra time in it, which I've noticed, if that is starting to thicken up in your bucket, I'm behind the camera, sorry guys, um, and you whip it back down, it does stay wet for quite a bit longer than it normally would. And workable. A little bit more oil. I don't want this to be quite, quite thin so we can spread it on nice. Uh, and if you're using the pull trap, you can see um, what it's like when you have line in front. This is the whole point of this video, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about yourself. At least we've got a bit of real-time plastering going on. And if I cut this bit out. So you've just got to stare at a blank wall while you're listening to me harping on. Right. Okay, pull trails up there. Probably got some thick finish on it, which I should have took off first. Nah, mate. Right. Yep, oh, don't you disappoint yourself. Put that on the edge of the tab for now. Yeah, I think another reason, I don't use as much, uh, never knock up as much gear as Alex Morley, but the um, reason I mostly work out of a tub is because when I'm doing a two, a two bag set, I'm not going to get it on a, I'm not going to get it on my spot board. 
about it pouring off. And I ain't got time to be cleaning it back up off the floor, so. I'll tell you what, even as I'm putting this on, the old, uh, the old tram lines are definitely a lot less. Of course, because I've got no corners, have I, to, uh, that would be digging it out. Used to say that these uh, rack valves are being changed just as well. Well, hey, just as well. <laughs> See, I don't know if uh, I'll probably zoom this in because uh, it's on the old 4K, which yes, I think it is, and uh, so you'll be able to see it. Because having to stop when you're doing something like this and uh, move the camera is a, it's a bit of a pain. I don't know if you can see when you're going back on the, at the second sweep. It's, uh, yeah, nice. Right, it's not particularly warm today, but I've got this sweatshirt on and I'm obviously working. I'm starting to get a bit too hot. Get this off in a minute. I mean, you could argue if you're going to uh, run a speed skin over a room like this after you've laid it on. Doesn't matter if there's uh, quite a lot of tram lines off using a sharp square edge trowel. Um, and you'd be right. But, you know, people like watching videos of different stuff doing the old spreading so here we are here we are if we've got to take your sweatshirt off now I'll get this last bit on first take your sweatshirt off before you put the, that last bit bit on the top on Guys, plastering like on the, I'll well, probably on YouTube as well, but mostly when I was <coughs> watching <coughs> the old SOS, I think just watching another plaster, it always seems to go, it seems to go on nicer and uh, just looks, I don't know, different to when you're actually there doing it yourself. It's probably just because you're doing it. It's like fried onions smelling nicer in uh, someone else's house if they're cooking them than they do in your house. Don't get me wrong. It's, Fried onion smell lovely, whatever. But uh, we smell a little bit nicer for some strange reason. Uh, if they're all oh, coming from a calf or, or you're around a friend's house and they're doing some cooking and the old onions are on the go. What's that all about? I think it might be like that uh, when you can buy, um, buy some drink that a broad that you bring home with you from your holiday. And you think, oh, I have some of that, it's really lovely, it makes a lovely cocktail, uh, or whatever. And, uh, and then when you get home, you know, put the same mixes with it and all that, just don't taste nothing like it did when you was on holiday. Turns out, that's just because a lot, apparently, a lot to do with the, what's this got to do with plastering? Oh, I don't know. A lot of um, things that are really nice abroad, it's because the other, you know, it's a nice atmosphere, you're on holiday, you're relaxed, the weather's warm, you've got that smell of lovely food drifting through a summer night from the beach, and then you have a drink and it's all associated with how nice it tastes. When you get back home, <laughs> and you're sitting in your garden, and it might not be particularly warm, uh, and you think, oh, I'll have one of them. Take me back to my holiday. And you're, and you're disappointed that it just doesn't taste the same. And apparently that's why it's to do with it's the atmosphere you're drinking in as well when you um, when that happens. Anyway, back to the plastering. A bit more gear on the top. Let's 
I say, this is fitting up and again already, but that, well, one, because it's got <coughs> half time in it, and two, because it will, uh, whoop, it will do that uh, when you add more water to it. But I don't think you'll get many older spreads that um, look to a fresh set for their second coat every time. Have you been taught that way and you're still fairly young in the game, young being 10, 15 years, <laughs> then uh, Yeah. <coughs> yeah, there's more or less no real trail marks with this. Obviously because it's um it's starting to pull well a little bit, not a lot, which obviously helps. But uh, not having those corners to dig in as you curve your trail around in this direction if you're right handed and put the opposite direction if you're at that end and you're left handed. Again some guys already know this years back a friend of mine a woman was working in Pentonville prison doing this refurb back in the 80s and I had um, yeah, the lovely sharp trout. It was so like well worn out where it was so um, been used for so long. Sharp as a razor. And uh, I had a go of it. I thought, oh, and I'd done most of my work, just doing a bit of a trout up. And as I like swept it across, dug a great big groove in my wall, and I thought, what's happened there? But it's because my mate who wore it in was left-handed. And of course he's worn it in on a left-handed angle. Uh, just in case you didn't know, that's, that is what happened. <laughs> and uh, of course, me being right-handed, the angles are completely wrong. Uh, so instead of leaving a nice, smooth sweep, I dug a great big gouge out me, out me wall. I wasn't that happy, but I learned a lesson that I've never forgot. It's been a long time <laughs> since then. Of course, you've got to be in a position to borrow a really nice warning left-handed person's trail if you're right-handed to find that out. So I'll just let you know in advance, just in case you find a trail and you think, oh, hello, that's nicely warning and sharp. I'll, um, don't know where you might have found it. Um, I'll try that. Um, next thing you know, yeah. Anywho. <coughs> So these bits on the end, I've got a square, you can't really, I don't think you can see them up here. Um, I'm using the uh, the little uh, spatulas that uh, Alex uh, Morley recommended. They're about a fiver, uh, there's about six or seven of them, different sizes from about an inch up to about five inches. And uh, yeah, they're really handy. I've got another one of those fibers uh, that's a bit loose in me, uh, in me mesh. Sticking out. Look at that, can't have that. Can't have that. One spark knife, cut it off. Yeah, there we go. Thank you kindly. Take that out. Anyway, bottom line, regarding the pool trout, he says, as he puts a very big tram line in it. <laughs> Um, it does make a bit of a difference, tram line wise, but nothing to write home about. And as I say, if you are going to go over the top of it with your, your with your proper trowel <laughs> or your um, or a speed skin, then uh, it's not really something to worry about. But I wanted to give it a go and see uh, see what it was like. And where I've only sort of worn this in a bit by sanding it, as opposed to because I don't really do much sand and cement work. Um, but if you don't do work like that, you're not really, it's going to take you forever to wear in a trowel in the traditional sense of the word. Um, <coughs> excuse me, long lasting cold, hanging on in there. 
Let's get me some more sleeves here. You could run a bigger, uh, a bigger one over it. Like I just was using earlier, but um, if it does drag, if you do leave something a bit too long, you've got plastic blade speed skim on it. Even when it's wet down, it could drag in a way you don't want it to. Wiggly bits that I need to. Uh, Never use a metal blade speed skin at this stage because it will draw the water to the surface and you will have blisters coming out your ears that you won't be able to get out until it's nearly dry. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. And if you want it to be as flat as possible, L. Stop touching the blade. Sorry, boss. Yeah, very nice. So, in a minute, or in a minute for you because I'll turn the camera off while this is pulling in. Um, I'll try, rather than just go over this with my metal blade speed skin, which is what I've been using as the finish, uh, I'm going to try the full trail of it instead. And if I don't like the way that's going, I'll just revert back to my uh, metal blade speed skin when I'm putting water on this. And uh, I'll probably just tickle up the edges with me oxy, which I started doing recently as well. Uh, guys uh, and girls, if um, I've got nothing to plug at the minute, so uh, if you haven't uh, put your name down for a possible spending a day with Kirk uh, plastering, either at his, at his gaff or one of his jobs, or at one of yours, he'll, 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 he'll give you some tuition, he'll lay before you, he'll do, he'll do whatever you want for the day. Um, but to do that, you've got to go into his drawer. I think it's about a tenner, and uh, but let's face it, it's worth it, because if you, if you win that and you get a day uh, with Kirk, especially if you're, like, um, you're a fairly new to plastering or a novice, then, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah, sort that out for oh, my man, for captain, for the captain. And, uh, if you have a chance. <sighs> right, well, let's pull him in. Um, I'm going to twiddle about with me a little bit so I've got around the corner. I'm going to knock the old camera off and turn it back on again so I'll see you in a second. Right, it's back in the room. I'm just going to uh, the ceiling line. Get that nice and uh, clean through there while it's still wet enough to do that. And as you can see, it's quite uh, quite clean already. This place on the side. Mm -hmm. okay. Off again. As I said, I'm going to uh, wet this, give it a little bit of a trowel with my pull trowel, and see what kind of result it gives us. In fact, it's a new one. I've only kind of worn it in by. Um, 
rubbing it on some sandpaper for a while, so. Sometimes you're better off with a slightly smaller brush than some of these parts. <laughs> when you're cleaning it off the, uh, off the line. <coughs> At least when you use half time, you know you're not going to have to be hanging around waiting for stuff to go. At this point, I'll probably just grab me a um, little brush and uh, do that right now. If this drags, it's just because it's not worn in enough, but I'm about to find that out. You just, uh... You know what, that's quite nice. Actually, I'm going to that back down and get a bit. At this point, I have to say, <coughs> yeah, you're definitely not getting a, <coughs> a tram line in it. Well, if you're doing your pressure right, anyway. Beautiful, beautiful. cameras there guys I can't, see, I can't keep moving the thing I'm a bit limited on space in this part of the hallway as well unfortunately <laughs> yeah that little plastic yeah. yeah these are the things that um, Alex can see that recommended that's just two of them that they get smaller than that if we're going down the little margins a little quick sand, going down the margins, down the door, especially the smaller ones, uh, they work a treat. They work a treat. Just putting a bit on, oops, well on the floor just then actually. <laughs> Around my uh, radiator valve, they're always a pain. There is a clipped in pipe, um, but I don't want to, which you can unclip, but I, I don't want to unclip it at this stage. I'd rather just walk around it. Um, last thing you want is a, any kind of leak coming out of your, uh, coming out of your red pipes. And as I say, these, um, these things aren't great for, uh, you know, well, it's not a margin, but if that was a margin, these do a, they do a lovely, a lovely job. Is that on there, camera? But I probably wasn't, was it? <laughs> Anywho, back to where was I? There we go, that's it. I was, I was having a, a first proper sort of flattening, no, that mean. I'm putting water on this. And because it's got, um, because I've remixed the original batch, you know, I've watered it down, and because it's got half time in it, that is allowing me to uh, put some water on it at this stage to. Uh, yeah. yeah, look at that, that's coming up, uh, that's coming up the tree, with well, the old round edge of the pump trail.
<coughs> at this point the fat I'm getting off it you can use for filling out because it's still the same colour and uh, well, it's just something you get to learn about consistencies of plaster <laughs> plastering down to also to radiator pipes that run along the top of a skirting it's doable but they're, they're a pain in the bomb in the bomb I've got to say bottom or back side yeah so I'm actually sanding this uh, sanding this new trowel down it's, um, it's worked wonders actually as I say if you tried this at this stage with it and it was fresh out of the box it would just tear or drag or like both basically Little red dots are coming through, and you may get the screws on. It's nice. The nice thing when you've got a, something like this on, and you've got control over. <clears throat> right, guys. Sorry, my card ran out of uh, <laughs> memory. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if you can see this. It comes up a treat. This is a wet trowel. See me the, the old red spots there, look. Um, <coughs> yeah, I ran out of um Okay boys and girls, I'm taking this last bit on my phone because uh I ran out of juice and uh, card space on my uh <laughs> on my little webcam uh on my GoPro. So uh yeah, troweling up with that uh with that pool uh, that pool trowel. Um, lovely. It's a right nice finish on there. So I just sharpened it up, um, and wore it in if you like, on some cool sandpaper. Uh, I did spend a bit of time on it, I have to say, but um, oh, it was well worth it. So it meant I could trail up uh, straight away with it, even though it's kind of brand new. Well, it is brand new. And uh, yeah, anyway, there you go. Uh, right, cheers guys, got used to using my phone. Hopefully you can see my mush. Um, you lucky things. Uh, that's it uh, for this uh, particular bit of a job. I now need to um, tidy up and go home. <laughs> uh, right, and I'll see you all soon. Or I'll see you in the in the uh, Young Open Trail uh, for Arsenal Plaster on. Um, what is it? Not this. Not today. Next Monday. Next Monday from seven o'clock. Bye for now.